Are you ready to bring on a new associate? Great. Now, how do you expect those new employees to know and understand your firm's processes, values, and work culture? You can't just toss them in the ocean and assume that what they learned in law school will keep them afloat. That's old school 1984 law firm stuff, and we have to be better than that. Modern onboarding practices are all about giving new employees direction, but also giving them agency and letting them come to conclusions and propose solutions themselves. Yes, it's a little more work on your part, but your firm and the employee will be much better served by it. This week, we're joined by defense attorney and friend of the show, Justy Nicole. She's back to give us insight into her innovative onboarding processes and how we can adapt these ideas into our own unique practices. We'll discuss how to approach client service and firm values training, and how to balance that with the more obvious operational and law-focused lessons. We'll end on a broader focus on your employees' long-term goals, and why we should let those guide the short-term goals we set together. I'm excited for you to hear this one, so let's get to it. I'm John Strohmeyer, and this is the Five Star Council Podcast. The market for legal services is shifting, and lawyers who don't adapt will be left behind. This podcast gives you a competitive edge in today's market by sharing the client service lessons you probably didn't learn in law school or in law practice. Let's start the show. Hey, five-star listeners. Before we start, I want to tell you about our amazing sponsor, Smith AI. Smith AI is a virtual receptionist service for small businesses with a specialty in working with solo and small law firms. I signed up with them within weeks of starting my firm because they are affordable for even the smallest solo practice. Their friendly receptionists respond to potential clients in Spanish or English, screen and schedule new leads, and can even take payments. And now they're answering calls 24 hours a day. So even when you're asleep, they're still working. Even beyond the phone, they've got live agents and chatbots ready to capture leads on your website by text and by Facebook Messenger. Smith's friendly gatekeepers can staff your front line so you can work uninterrupted. You can finally have the peace of mind that while you're working, you're not missing out on future work. Plans start at just $70 a month for calls and $100 a month for chats. Smith AI is offering a free trial, and our podcast listeners get an extra $100 discount code with promo code 5 star. That's F I V E. S-T-A-R. Sign up and learn more at www.smith.ai. Don't let another day go by. Try Smith AI. Justy Nicole, it is great to have you back. Thanks, John. I'm I'm happy to be here. Uh, so you're coming back. This time we're talking about something a little bit different than before because you and I both recently hired new first-year associates. And we are going through the headaches that kindly attorneys went through with us a few years ago when we were fresh out of law school. But we both have these crazy ideas that training for a new lawyer shouldn't be toss them in the deep end and hope they learn how to uh, swim quickly. Yeah, that's that doesn't do anybody any good, like handing somebody a bunch of files and just saying, go have at it. This is. I wouldn't do that to a law clerk. Why would I do that to an attorney? Right. And in terms of when I think back, you know, a lot of this podcast is based on what I learned at the Four Seasons. It was my job there. When I started off as a front desk clerk, I was making $10 an hour. It was three months before I was released into the wild on my own. I had literally, you know, Two weeks of training where I couldn't talk to anybody. I was just sitting and watching and listening, following people around, you know, learning how to, you know, train in the operators uh, with PBX for three or so weeks, just how to answer the phones, how to deal with the regular calls being scheduled as a PBX operator before I started learning how to run the computers as front desk agent. That is for a frontline you know, I don't want to say disposable or easily replaceable position, but this was something where I was going to be making, you know, an hour, a low hourly wage to be a front desk clerk. And it took three months before I was released. (laughs) That was like when I applied for the job at Cabela's, when I had to retake the bar, when I moved to Idaho and they're like, why does a lawyer want to work in, in Cabela's? And I was like, well, literally I don't want to use my brain. I, I'm going to be studying for the bar on my own. I didn't take the bar prep course a second time. And I was like, 
can I work like a cashier or something? And they were like, no, 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 no. We're going to start you in the warehouse. <laughs> so I drove yeah. a forklift for, yeah, like six months while I was studying for the bar and waiting for bar exam results. <laughs> yeah, Didn't have so, any client facing stuff. <laughs> and so I think this is where we start of you and I have both learned from working in other environments where they actually trained you to do things that weren't your ultimate highest and best use. You've got your program of how you're onboarding your new associate. I've got mine. Really, the point of this is I just want to pick your brain and record the conversation. So hopefully, if if I can get a pointer or two and then share it with our good listeners, that's, that's a win. Uh, so why don't you just start with the overview of what does it look like for a new associate who's learning what you do? Oh, man. So... The, the funny thing about our training profile is I, I think unlike you, I didn't go straight out of law school for my associates. So I've got three new attorneys starting August, October, November. Um, we are starting another admin assistant as well, but all of them, none of them are getting legal training at all. Like we don't, they're not new to criminal defense or family law. We hired for that skill set. What I'm really doing is I am untraining bad habits that they have gotten at other firms and other jobs. Um, and that's that's pretty much all law firms jobs. <laughs> uh, no, every every law firm I moved to, so I you know left the first firm, went to the second, left the second, went to the third, left the third to start my own. Every time I switched, I was surprised at how close to, if not way over the line in terms of unacceptable near, you know, grievance level conduct I had been trained. You know, like they do that there and they still have licenses <coughs> was basically the refrain every time I changed firms. <laughs> right. And so with us, the training on the legal side, we expect that these experienced attorneys are going to know, you know, the, the constitutional issues that come up in criminal cases or how to do a sworn financial statement. Um, that's what CLEs are for also. Like right. if they don't have that expertise, like I'll get you a home study, like listen to some of the best family law lawyers. I don't need to teach somebody family law. In fact, I couldn't teach somebody family law. So I'd be that would be about practice. Yeah. Right. Um, but what I teach and what we start with is always a uh, half day on literally just the vision of the firm. And that is client service. Um, there's a really great couple of YouTube videos that hammer that home. And I literally put them into our Canva presentation. So I'm going from like, this is what we do internally to here's some great examples on YouTube. You can watch this information online anytime. Oh, and here's books that we recommend about this client service mindset. Um, yeah, so we send homework home. <laughs> I mean, it's that's not wrong. And so when you're saying you're going to YouTube, what are you, are you linking to your own content? No. Not usually. It's it's stuff about um, how like I, was, I think it was an accountant seminar or a training seminar. And it's like, what do you do under these circumstances to show your client service is most important? And I'll I'll put the link in the show notes oh, for you, John. Um, it's fantastic and it's hilarious and it gets people talking very early on in the training. So I've done this training for one person at a time. I've also done this as a group and I have had all of my existing employees also come in and audit this training too. So yeah, spending like a, a half day on vision, on values, on client service, that was huge. And some of it is we want to burn the system down too. So we don't look to internal at all. <laughs> right. So I mean, it's, you're, you're getting you're making sure that they are coming in and they know because if they don't know how and why you work and they didn't get filtered out in the interview process, you still want to make sure they understand how things are going to work internally for you. Yeah. Yeah. And like a little bit of that is me talking about what I do versus what my partner Jen does. You know, she's, she's much more the workhorse does the HR stuff. You know, I'm out here, 
thinking up crazy ways our tech can talk to each other, um, designing more infographics for clients. Um, it's, it's a division of labor, but they need to know who's who Mm -hmm. and they need to take ownership over some of their information. So we immediately give them our internal wiki link to Tetra where we have all of our HR policies, but we also have practices and procedures. And I'm like, I'll run them through one or two pages because we require them to input their emergency contact and and like personal phone numbers and stuff if there's ever an issue. Um, But I actually say, you know, after this, you have this link, please go through the entire Tetra and let me know if there's something that you're like, I have questions on this or I need additional training on this. And what's been amazing is the feedback from that. Like, we have two new follow-up trainings that we're going to do for intake, like doing client intakes for new clients and doing billing for our state contracts. And it, those are going to be half day programs as well. And that came from requests. It was, it was not as easy to put how to do ADC billing on a, a loom video. <laughs> Got <laughs> it was just too much. Yeah. Yeah, I have a five minute limit on Loom because I refuse to pay for it. So let's just be honest. I can talk way more than five minutes about billing. (laughs) I mean, you're coming at this as burning off the bad habits of seasoned attorneys. You're not looking at this as here's somebody fresh out of law school. And I am looking at somebody who's fresh out of law school. And I'll talk about my process in just a minute. But give me a sense of how long is this training program? Like, what do you, how long before you release them into the wild? I, um, they're never really in the wild. Like, (laughs) okay, fair. I'm always here, you know, it's, they they can always reach me in Jen anytime. Um, it's a, we, we schedule the first month and we do it in week increments. Like this week we're working on intake, you know, and I'm going to have you do, um, three, shadow like call three calls with me where you shadow three calls with Jen where you shadow you need to summarize and be familiar with the intake guidelines that are on Tetra and like our fee schedule and everything and then the second part of the week you're gonna do it you're gonna lead it I'm gonna shadow you and then we'll do feedback after that like that's one part of the intake week um and then some of it is going to court together right because we are in court we're not just a transactional firm and what we'll often do, especially with WebEx court right now is I will send my associates to court and I'll log in on WebEx and see how they do. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah. Um, there's, there's a process, but the first month is kind of scripted. Got it. So when you're saying you're going to watch it or you're going to log in and watch how they do, there's obviously for, I'm going to pick criminal defense because that's easy. There's an easy up or down. Did they do well of, Is your client free to go or not? (laughs) But that's not the end of the story for for your job. Like there there are multiple grades, you know, gradations on quality of representation. Do you spell out like you're going to be, you know, it's not. Yes, 51 percent of the equation is possibly did our client get to go free. But whatever the other percentage is, these are the things I'm expecting of you. So. Are you spelling out, these are the other ex- things I'm expecting of you? Yes. Um, one of the things we found is actually what happens in court is not indicative of success. Because you do not get a, a yes or no all the time. Like criminal defense is very much gray. And clients are never happy. DAs are never happy. Judges are always grouchy. You know, I mean, you, you name it. What happens on the record is only a tiny bit of what we do. So we have procedures in place where we expect this is what happens. This is what we walk our clients through on the intake call. Um, This is when they can expect to do a discovery review call before they go to court. And so that discovery review call entails them reading their own police reports and watching all the badge camera at the same time that you are. And then talking about it and locating any discrepancies and that sort of stuff. Um, Then The next step, you know, is let's talk to the DA. 
let's get the offer and then let's go to court and determine whether we're going to take that offer. And most of the time I can resolve the case before the first court date if I have a DA that's actually communicative. So the expectation of our associates is to do exactly that, work the case as quickly as possible because nobody wants to keep coming back and forth to court. Um, some of our other cases, our family law cases, don't have that same goal. And one of the things that we do with the onboarding thing is we initiate them thinking about like a GPS, um, which which is more grow, perform, succeed. I think it's what the GAP uses for um, instead of annual reviews, they do monthly GPS. And so for us, I'm like, I want you to set your goals and tell me what it means to succeed for you in your field, right? If it's family law, if it's your criminal defense attorney, if you're the admin assistant, if you're doing AP and AR, you know, like, what does that look like? Is it five collection calls a week, one a day? You know, is it whatever the metric is, they are responsible for setting that with input from us during that first month. Got it. Um, that's interesting. I mean, like, there's a lot to dig in there. And looking at what I also want to talk about, I'm going to kind of throw it back just to say, well, here's what I'm looking at as a first year, you know, somebody who just hired somebody fresh out of law school. Mm -hmm. The You know, one of the best things that I did was I actually hired this associate almost two years ago as a 2L. So she's been around. She has been, She knows who people are. She knows how we work. She is. She was in the office back when being in the office was a normal and regular thing. And she's been part of the transition. So, the, you know, in terms of that, that's been great. The other thing that I like that you're doing that literally just happened right before this, shadowing, making sure that you know, she is following along with me on client meetings. And this was a, you know, it was scheduled as a two hour client meeting. It ended up running almost two and a half. And hearing, you know, having her hear me say to the client after he said, well, we only expected you to be here for an hour and a half. And here you are almost an extra hour. Well, no, you know, the reason we do that is you paid for the time, what, how, however long the, the expectation is you see how I've responded to this client in this case it will help guide the behavior in the future. You, you've got the examples and that's something that, I mean, the, the shadowing I think is very undervalued. Yeah. And I, I think it's different too. Like lawyerists in a couple other places, they discuss like recording your intake calls and that sort of stuff. And I'm like, this goes so much further beyond that because this is real time in the moment you can, sh you can be shadowed and they can pick up phrases that work, right? Because lawyers are not salesmen, especially in our intake stuff. Um, and then on the other end, if you need to step in because they've said something that they're not sure about, you know, once you answer that question, my hope is you're confident enough and you're releasing into the wild. I should only have to answer your questions once, especially right. for an attorney. And I... I find those people that don't need to have repeated answers and never let them go. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the thing is just, you want to train them how to do this. And I, I know I've said this a few times here on the podcast, but it always bears repeating. Like one of the best management lessons I got before I was a manager, I'd come back from the front desk to ask the manager, like, what do I do with this? The manager just looked at me. He's like, I'll tell you the answer, but this is the last time. Every time, you know, going forward, you don't get to ask questions. You're just coming back and proposing solutions. Yeah. You, know, you need to come back and say, Marlon, this is the situation. This is what I think we're going to do. And what it was doing, you know, it would have been after I'd been, again, released to operate on my own in the hotel. But what they were doing is saying, we want you to – don't just come back and expect the answer. We want you to think about what the solution should be so that you're learning how to make those decisions. And that is primarily why I am a successful business owner and not a minion anymore because I always had that mindset of the right. – 
I'm going to give you the solution or at least a range of possible ways to fix this problem ever since I was a little kid. And that's still, that's still really my, my role. We have an all team meeting. Um, I think we had an all team meeting yesterday on intakes and I'm like, would this help Would this help Would this help? And I mean, I still have, you know, the, the sticky notes on my desk to, to make these changes. Like, they need a better fee schedule breakdown for animal cases and DIY cases. You know, it's like, I can do that, but I'm the one coming up with it when they're right. like, we don't feel like we know what we're doing. I'm like, well, here's six solutions. Pick one. Right. <laughs> what you've been here this long. What do you think the answer is? Right. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the next level when they're comfortable doing that, you know, they will have been here for longer than a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And so after that client meeting that we just got out of, Kimmy was there with me for the entire time. She, you know, she's been with me for two weeks now. The it really is like you're there to watch. If you have questions, save them till the end, because I may not have answered something specific. And this is also the client's time, not your specific training time. So keep everything together. You will learn what the, you know, the answers you don't know, many of them you'll pick up over time. And also you'll pick them up because, because she is not yet licensed. State Bar of Texas gives away CLE for free until she gets her license. So her, in terms of her training, one day a week roughly is spent, just go watch CLE. It's not perfect, but you're going to hear a lot of these concepts from somebody other than me, you may, pay, you know, God willing, you'll learn something I, I don't know. And then you can bring it back. And then the point is, if you hear something that you don't understand or you think is wrong, you're supposed to tell me <laughs> so that, you know, I'm sure you, this has been the same with you. If like, you'll hear things in CLE and you say, that's great, but we don't do it that way for this reason, or that may work in your county. It's not going to work in this county. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, that is pretty much the difference between taking someone who's brand new out of law school, not licensed yet. You know, you got to front load that CLE stuff and that substantive training for the specific role that they're in. Um, But I don't I, I, I can't emphasize enough that it's also important to do a little bit of what is their goal, like their goal setting makes such a difference in our firm. Um, so we have an individual development plan, a personal vision worksheet, you know, um, those are filled out by the employee and they include like personal vision, not, not work vision, but like I have one client or one client, one assistant who wants to go to law school and one who's a retired nurse and just wants to work part-time. Those are diametrically opposed, uh, you know, personal backgrounds, um, But it was interesting because it took me two years to get my assistant into a paralegal role. And she is now the full-time paralegal for our family law division. And she's going to law school in a year or two. She's, she's amazing. She's like a mini me and I would keep her forever as my admin assistant, but that's not the good use of her time, nor is it in keeping with her goals. So she's so excited about additional job authority. It's amazing. She doesn't have to manage my email anymore. (laughs) <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So in terms of setting those goals, I mean, you said personal vision, there are, you know, internal skills development. What else goes into that? What is that? What is the process of getting them to write them down and have them? We do it together as okay. a group on this half day training, the first half of the day with the vision and the values and the goals and stuff. Um, I take them through a exercise where it's like, I can't remember who did it first. I've been through it a few times, but it's like, basically you start with what would they say about you when you die? What's your legacy for your lifetime? What do you want that to say on your tombstone or your eulogy work backwards? Okay. 10 years from now, what would support those goals? Five years from now, what would support those goals? Three years from now, what would support those goals? And at that point, we take a break and then they work for us for that month. And then we come back and we do, okay, what are your goals for this year? Knowing where you want to be in three years, knowing you've worked here for four weeks, this is the way we work. 
Does it still fit? What would you change? How can we support you with, with your goals? And we've sent people back to school and let them go, you know, and it, it made them happy. And I was like, this is so odd. I am right. firing someone, but it's like they're happy about it. Well, no, I mean, that, <laughs> I really like the, you're not forcing them to all have their their grand vision for the future all in one go. Mm-mm. But you are, you're giving them the space to let, you know, basically let it marinate for a month. Then come back and, well, does this still look like a plan to you? <laughs> and yeah. does, this, does this align with everything you want to do? Yeah. And then, you know, from the one year, then you can go backward and do your quarterly goals and your, your weekly goals and your daily stuff. But then you get bogged down in the day-to-day stuff. So, yeah, I, I like to start big and work backwards. But Oh, I think that's the – I mean, it's, otherwise you're chasing – too many short-term things and you don't see how they necessarily fit together. Well, and the funny thing is too, it's a timing thing. You know, like somebody may have a goal in five years that they didn't even realize that they weren't making any progress towards until they sit down and think about it. And then they have to do like this whole life adjusting soul searching you right. know, and you hope that's that's been done before they're a new employee. But I, I hit the vision, the values and the goals really hard because we've had the wrong people in the wrong seats before. <laughs> and that's the thing is just the, the timing. So for me as an estate planner here in Texas, the goal for my new associate is in five years after she has five years of experience, she sits and takes and passes on the first try the board certification exam for estate planning. But that's not something you can just do. You have to have the plan now because you can, if you start working at it now, it's much easier to take that exam if you know what you're going to need to be, what you're going to need to do. I mean, among other things, um, nobody will see this, but I'm picking up my copy of Johansson's Texas Estates Code annotated. It's 1,400 pages. And I read that thing cover to cover when I was a fifth year associate. I really wish I would have read it as a first year associate because it really does, you know, once you've read the code start to finish that governs your practice with case annotations, everything really snapped into focus. Now, I would have been a first year and a lot of things would have gone over my head. But But you would have known where to look later when it came up again. I would have known where to look. I would have known roughly what some of the answers are. Even the one case, one sentence case summaries give you a really good gut instinct of what, you know, like, oh, there have been five cases on this and mostly this is how this works out. Now, when it's time to take the board certification exam again, I'm going to tell her you're going to read the code again, start to finish just to see what's changed. And 1400 pages is a lot. But it's also, you know, one hour a week for, I mean, if probably 10 weeks, you know, just because those are, it's not normal reading, but you can kind of rush, you can go through that. And the point is to say, you know, back to the five-year vision, you've got to know now that 2,800 pages of reading is in your next five years, better to space it all out than to try and cram it all in in a day or three. If I could internalize that lesson, we'd be doing great, but no, nah, I still procrastinate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, Me my, that's why my job is a planner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think what's, what's interesting is you hit the vision, the values and everything hard first. We start with that because that is the why. And then we get into the how. And this is for John, you know, this from, from my technology use and (laughs) all the various different systems, you know, the second half of your first day is literally, I'm going to show you the tech, the apps and the systems that we use. It's all going to go over your head, but it's exactly that. At least you have seen the word Clio, Mm -hmm. right. Or you've seen the word Smith AI or whatever, you know, and you know, vaguely what they do. Right. You don't have to understand how they all work together. But you I don't need, need to you to explain an API. Yeah. Yes, I'll take care I need, of that, right? I, I don't need you to 
be able to make all the magic happen in a new zap. Yep. But you need to know that, you know, the computer the computer bits fit together and the glue is called Zapier. There's Zapier. Yep. Zapier. Mm-hmm. And, and if you uh, if you notice something is broken, please tell me. Right. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, getting into what what my first year associates doing, she's we've got it set out as kind of a three month onboarding program for her because there's a lot. And that puts us right at about Thanksgiving, which is a nice, convenient break. On a five-day week, what I'm looking at for her is two of those days are head down doing, you know, basically paralegal work, which when you come up as an estate and tax planner, that's what you're doing for the first couple of years for, you know, just you're learning how to do the nuts and bolts basic and skills. It's, it's a little bit of humility for people too. Like mm-hmm. I have found that brand new attorneys. So this, even though I'm running my own firm now, like I have hired multiple attorneys in the past and been responsible for their training. Even as a DA, uh, I was lead DA for County court, which is where all the brand new DAs go. What's amazing. And what we had said at the beginning was there's something to be had or something to be said for having experience in other jobs. How many baby lawyers have never had a job before? So many. Most of them? Yeah. And they come out thinking, I'm the lawyer. The staff needs to listen to me. What I found in my very first legal associate job was I liked the staff better than I liked the attorneys. And I treated myself like staff. And I thought I was the staff. And I learned how to use the copier, how to use the fax machine. None of these things actually exist anymore. And I just dated myself. Um, but, you know, I, I was in the trenches doing my own stuff. I'm not going to dictate and then have them redline and like send me back copies. Like that's stupid. So for us, for us, it was everybody needs to have everybody else's job beneath them. They need to be comfortable with. Absolutely. Because if your uh, paralegal's out for a day, guess what? You're doing it all yourself anyway. Exactly. And I'm looking at the clock. We are, we have, Close. we're having way too much on this, uh, way too much fun on this, but there are a few things I want to kind of pull together as we draw to a close. So, you know, on a f- five day schedule, my new associates doing two days of just be the paralegal. It's, and these aren't like Monday and Tuesday, it's spread throughout the five day, you know, the, the mythical five day week. She's doing one day effectively shadowing me, going to meetings, on phone calls, just listening. And then it's easy to have her, you know, like ask questions at the end of the phone call. So this is what we discussed. Do you know what you need to do? Off you go. One day of CLE. And then the last day is learn everybody else's job. So right now, as we're talking, she's helping the internal bookkeeper run bills, reconcile, reconcile IOLTA, and basically understand how the money works because then it makes a lot more sense of what needs to be done. You know, in in the next, we have not gotten to her particular uh, Zapier training, but that's coming in the next few weeks because she should know roughly how it works and look for the places where we can start pulling things together. Like, can we do this faster? Yeah, I think... That's that's big big on our end too is efficiency, and um, one of the things I did early on was to make sure that people had access to me. Was I initiated a daily stand up for the first month? You are required to do a daily stand up on Slack, and it's a series of five questions. What three things did you get done yesterday? What three things are you going to do tomorrow? What's your major priority or today? What's your major priority? What's going to hold you back? You know that kind of stuff. And then we end with, how are you feeling? Oh, I like that. Because I get I get so much information just asking that question. It's absolutely insane. Um, and and that, that also goes to our firm culture, which is a little bit of, we are ambitious rebels. We are fearless. We don't, we don't care what other people think. And that includes the boss, right? Like there is no judgment. If you make a mistake with us, we just fix it. Everybody makes mistakes. So having the freedom to know that I've got your back hundred percent of the time, and we'd rather fire a client 
then have it affect your mental health. Justy, I think that's probably as good a place as any to... <laughs> mental health during COVID, yeah. <laughs> mental health during COVID. I think this is probably a good place to uh, end the interview for right now. Obviously, we could keep going. Where can people who are learning, you know, obviously we'll have some links. Where can uh, dear listener find more about you and what you're doing? Uh, I'm active on Twitter, but there's also our website. And my Twitter handle is at Justy, the number four justice, J-U-S-T-I-E for justice. And our website is Colorado Lawyer Team. You can check us out anytime. Um, I occasionally still write content for the blog and stuff too, but. Yeah, Twitter, Facebook, we're on all of them. Super. Well, Justy, thanks for joining us. And we'll probably have you back to talk more about training in the future. I feel like this is like a week-long podcast. (laughs) Oh, my God. Like we've barely scratched the surface. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for having me, John. I'm glad to be here. Of course. Thanks so much for listening. You can find more info on us and get your free white paper on client service at fivestarcouncil.com. You can get in touch with me at john at fivestarcouncil.com. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe wherever fine podcasts are found and leave us a review wherever you can.